Welcome back everyone. In this video, let's talk a bit about validation. To be more precise, let's understand when does validation run. What we know so far is that once the validation rules are run, Formic auto-populates the formic.errors object with the error messages. So for this video, we can use that to monitor when exactly validation runs. Now we need to pick a field that implements the render props pattern which will give us access to formic.errors object. We have two choices. We can use the address field or the phone numbers field. Since the address field is a fast field component, its behavior is not exactly what we want for this video. So let's go with phone numbers. In the phone numbers field array component, we can see that we already get access to the form object. All we have to do now is add a log statement form errors form dot errors. All right, let's save the file and head to the browser. On page load, you can see that the errors object is empty. So the form validation has not yet run. Now let's understand the different scenarios in which this errors object gets populated. The first scenario is when a change event has occurred. So in the channel field, if I start typing in something, you can see that the errors object is now populated. So first scenario, formic runs validation after any change event in the form. Let's reload the form and take a look at the second scenario. On page load, again, the errors object is empty. Now, if I click inside the channel field and then click outside, you can see that again, the errors object is populated. So second scenario, formic runs validation after any blur event in the form. That is, you blur out from a form field. Let's reload the page one more time and take a look at our third scenario. On page load, again, errors object is empty. Now, without interacting with any of the form fields, I'm going to directly click on the submit button. Once again, we can see that the errors object is populated. So whenever form submission is attempted, Formic runs the validation. And what is great here is that if the validation does not pass for all the fields, the onSubmit handler never gets executed. So you don't have to worry about manually handling form submission only if all the validation rules pass. Formic will take care of that for you. So on change, on blur and attempt to submit the form. These are the three cases in which validation will be run. Now, based on the complexity of your form or even just to meet your application requirements, sometimes we might not want Formic to automatically run the validation function for us. So what Formic does is provide two props to control the first two scenarios. So back in VS Code on the Formic component, we can specify a prop called validate on change and set it to false. This will instruct Formic to not run the validation function on a change event. If you save the file, go back to the browser, type in our channel name. You can see that the errors object is still not populated. If I blur out though, the errors object is populated. Now similar to validate on change, on the formic component, we can pass in another prop called validate on blur and set it to false. And as you might have already guessed, validation will never be run even on a blur event. So if I go back to the browser, type in something, the errors object is not populated. Click outside, the errors object is still not populated. Again, this is definitely dependent on your requirements and may not even be required. My intention is only to make sure you're aware of it. If a situation arises for its usage, you definitely know what has to be done. 
So again, to quickly summarize, Formic runs validations on change event, on blur event, and when an attempt is made to submit the form. You can control the first two scenarios by setting validate on change and validate on blur props to false, which of course are set to true by default. All right, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.